Greetings everyone, immortality has been one of humanity's most ancient desires and aspirations, but medical advancements have shown that our physical bodies appear to be programmed to die after around 100 years. In 1961, Leonard Hayflick discovered that all normal human cells will divide 40 to 60 times before entering a state of senescence and death. Today we call this the Hayflick Limit. You cannot build a house that can last forever if the bricks that make it up cannot last forever, right? However, this does not mean that humans cannot achieve immortality altogether. We just need to approach it from a different angle. Many believe that humans are actually composed of two parts, the body and the mind. If we can separate the mind from the body, we will no longer be bound by the Hayflick limit or the lifespan of the body that houses the mind. It's like being able to copy all the data from your old iPhone to the new one your boyfriend gave you for your birthday. Some scientists believe that the information in the brain can be transferred or copied partially or fully to a USB drive or another brain. In this video, we will discuss the possibility of creating a version of immortality by backing up the human mind. Firstly, why would you need to upload your mind into a USB drive? Imagine cleaning out your attic and stumbling upon a hard drive containing 1 million Bitcoin you had forgotten about since 2009. With one Bitcoin currently, as of the time this video was made, July 17th, worth $65,101.01, you'd instantly become the 22nd richest person in the world. Nice. However, let's say you're then diagnosed with terminal cancer and given only three months to live. No, God, please, no, no! As you grapple with your mortality, you remember your newfound fortune of $65 billion and reach out to the world's top doctors and scientists in a desperate bid for immortality. But they all shake their heads. Then, one person approaches you with a USB drive and says, I can copy your brain into this USB drive. With it, you can not only live forever, but also return to your most youthful and vibrant state. Whenever you want, just plug this USB drive in, press the download and install button, and voila. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? This is a fun scenario I've made up to help you visualize one of the applications of mind uploading technology. As the name suggests, it is the process of digitizing the brain, which contains all of a person's memories, emotions, experiences, and personality and then transferring all of that data into a computer or robot so that the mind can live on even after the physical body has died. In this way, futurists believe that humans will be able to extend their lifespan or even achieve digital immortality. One of the other purposes of mind uploading is to create eternal backups that can be loaded into supercomputers to control space exploration ships searching for life beyond Earth. These digital astronauts would not be affected by the harsh vacuum of space, microgravity, or deadly cosmic radiation, and would allow for unlimited exploration missions, with unlimited here meaning until the ship breaks down. Or closer to home, digital minds can become the ultimate legacy after our human civilization suffers a global catastrophe. On a more positive note, Human intelligences uploaded into computers would operate like a supercomputer, meaning they could think much faster and therefore be much more intelligent than their original versions. A system of uploaded brains, when connected together, could potentially drive technological development at an exponential rate, even reaching the ultimate pinnacle of technology, known as the technological singularity. But that's just the idea. What about reality? Uploading minds to computers is not easy. In fact, it's so difficult that many consider it the ultimate challenge in neuroscience and neuroinformatics. Neuroscientists believe that the most important functions of the mind, such as learning, memory, and consciousness, arise from purely physical and electrochemical processes in the brain that are governed by the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology that we know and understand. So why hasn't anyone tried copying it onto a USB drive yet? 
In the past, scientists have repeatedly tried to simulate parts of the human brain. Based on these simulations, they estimate that if Moore's law continues to hold true, we will have the computational power to upload an entire human mind within the next few decades. But there's a problem. Moore's law predicts that the processing power of chips will double every two years. This law has held true since 1975, but since 2010, the power of processors seems to have stopped following this rule. In other words, it seems like we're approaching the limits of computing power. But that doesn't mean that humanity will never have enough computing power to upload an entire human mind. Because to be honest, no one knows how much computing power we will ultimately need. We only know that it will be extremely large. You've probably heard somewhere that the human brain has 86 billion neurons, each of which can have up to thousands and up to 15,000 connections with the surrounding brain cells, creating an incredibly complex network of over one quadrillion connections inside your skull. The cerebral cortex alone, the wrinkled surface of the brain, contains 125 trillion synapses, 1,500 times more than the number of stars in the Milky Way. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to copying the mind. To accurately replicate the brain, we would need to precisely simulate nearly a hundred billion nerve cells and one quadrillion connections between them. The problem is that each individual neuron itself is an incredibly complex and powerful biological supercomputer. You can't just assign it an X, Y, or zero, one and be done with it. To digitize just one neuron, you would need to simulate the structure and function of the hundreds of trillions of atoms and trillions of molecules that make up that neuron, and simulate all the rules that govern how each part interacts with each other. This would require computers thousands of billions of times larger and more powerful than anything we have today. According to pages 80 and 81 of a 130-page study in 2008, to simulate a molecular model of a brain, including the position and random behavior of every single molecule that makes up the brain, we would need a processing capacity of about 10 to the power of 43 flops, and a memory of around 38.8 trillion terabytes, equivalent to 78 trillion 512 gigabyte iPhone 15. In case you're still having trouble imagining 10 to the power of 43 flops, that's eight septillion times more computing power than the world's most powerful supercomputer at the time, Frontier. Frontier cost $600 million, has over 600,000 CPU cores, over 8 million GPU cores, takes up 680 square meters, and consumes nearly 23 million watts of power. In 2010, researchers at Stanford University School of Medicine successfully imaged synapses from a section of a mouse brain. To do this, they sliced an extremely thin section of the mouse brain just 70 nanometers thick, equivalent to 700 hydrogen atoms, placed side by side. The brain slice was then stained with specialized fluorescent molecules that bind to different proteins and emit different colors. And the final product is what you are seeing on the screen. The final product as you can see on the screen is not only visually striking, but also reveals a disappointing truth once again, the brain shows that it is thousands of times more complex than we thought. Each synapse, each colored dot you see on the screen, which we previously thought was just a simple on-off switch, turns out to be a microprocessor, a tiny biological chip with both information processing and memory functions. In addition, synapses do have switches, about 1,000 switches per synapse. In total, a complete human brain has more switches than all the computers, routers, and internet connections on Earth combined. In other words, your brain alone is more massive than the entire internet. In short, simulating the brain or digitizing the mind is a crazy and fantastic idea, but that's why it's currently purely in the realm of imagination and science fiction. What do you think? Please comment below, and as always, Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any interesting content. For now, goodbye and see you next time.